Welcome to Pilar and Friends. As promised, we have a compact, brief, but sweet time with you today to discuss whatever everyone needs to know and how to do it at this time. We have reached out to Dr. Anna Watten, a psychologist, and she will share with us her expert opinion on the matter of adapting to the new normal. Welcome to Pilar and Friends, Dr. Anna Wati. Thank you, Ms. Pilar. Thank you for inviting me to your program. Doctor, I understand that as a psychologist, this is your field of expertise. So I really want to thank you for accepting our invitation because I know that you're very busy these days. You're a much, much needed person nowadays. People are needing you badly. This is true, Ms. Pilar. This is actually a very busy time for our mental health service providers, especially in this time of the pandemic. As for me, as a clinical psychologist, I spend my days for patients' consultation, for psychological assessment, counseling and psychotherapy, as well as conducting webinars also with FP Live. I am very thankful for this opportunity to share about mental health to, to our fellow Filipinos, even those uh, living abroad, so that you'll be able to reach out to a lot of people in one time. Well, this is very well, Doctor. You see, so many people are having mixed emotions nowadays, since this is probably the most difficult times of our lives. That's right. No one is prepared for this pandemic. This new normal that everyone is talking about, what exactly is this, Doctor? Is it a general situation that we will have to contend with and accept? Because there is nothing we can do about this. This seems to be a seemingly permanent situation. Will this disappear? And when will this disappear? Yes, we can call it a general situation. It would seem that the crisis has already been embedded in our daily lives, especially with the length of time that we have been experiencing this pandemic, with the government stay at home orders, with lockdowns, with work from home arrangements. This has been for a long time already, which means to say that this is already our new normal. Yes, Ms. Miller, I would like to share to you and your audience on what we can do during this pandemic. First, we need to accept that this is already our new normal. The next, we have to adapt to this new normal. There are two things in life. The things that we are in control of and the things that are beyond our control. This pandemic, it is a good thing to focus on the things that we can control. We are in control of our thoughts and we are in control of our actions. A lot of people have been experiencing negative emotions during this pandemic. Sad, worried, and anxious. Let's take for example, anxious. Being anxious is a typical everyday experience. It's just that during this pandemic, the level of anxiety is quite heightened. And when I ask people, what do you think when you're anxious? What do you think that when you're sad? And then they focus on the pandemic. I would like to remind everyone, especially the audience of Ms. Pilar, the very important thing in life. Our feelings come from our thoughts. It's not the pandemic per se that caused you these very negative emotions, the negative, experience, the negative emotions that you have been experiencing for a long time, but it's actually your interpretation of the pandemic. For some, people are thinking that the with this pandemic, life is going to be miserable. There will be not enough resources to see them through during this pandemic. That there is no more hope during this pandemic. And we need to question our irrational thoughts. We're not supposed to question the feelings of one another because to question the feelings of one another 
it means like you're invalidating the feelings and when you invalidate the feelings of another it's like disrespecting the person so we focus on our thoughts we focus on our irrational thoughts and work on it is it really true that life is going to be miserable during this pandemic there might have been some things that we can no longer do during this pandemic but of course there are still things that you can do during this pandemic so instead of putting into mind that this is going to be a miserable life and of course it cannot also be that we put in all positive things in our head because it may not it may not be realistic but then again how about changing our thought patterns that instead of it's going to be a miserable life yes it can be challenging but yes i can do it let us learn a b c d a stands for adversity covid is here covid is real and this is already our new normal this is our adversity let's go to b b stands for beliefs what are your beliefs during this pandemic with this new normal for some people it can be i should not be experiencing this i should not be experiencing all of this negative impact of the pandemic and letter c consequences what are the consequences when you have these beliefs probably you'll be agitated frustrated angry worried and sad then let's go to d d is disputing your irrational beliefs focus on the irrational beliefs of i should not be subjected to this difficulties in life and again whoever told us that it's going to be a bed of roses in life there will be good things in life but there can also be challenges so instead of looking into the should that i should not be experiencing this properly focus on what can i do there might be things that you can no longer do but there are things that you can do during this pandemic even with our restrictions one can still be productive for some there are different ways of coping with the pandemic it can be starting with a hobby there have been many plantitos and plantitas out there for some it can be a focus on relationships this is a time to focus on family that even when we physically distance from people it does not stop us from being emotionally connected to people so this can be a great time to focus our relationships if there are difficult and challenging relationships this may be a perfect time to mend these relationships and focus on the things that we can still do but how do we move from a negative emotion to a positive emotion from feeling sad worried and anxious how do we become more positive about things in life now i'd like you to imagine a car a car has four wheels the back wheels represent our feelings and physiology like during this pandemic how have you been feeling so again sad anxious worried now let's go to the physiology it can be feeling tired all the time or palpitations now let's go to the front wheels of the car the front wheels are our thoughts and our actions so while think while feeling sad worried and feeling tired what have you been thinking so probably if you're thinking that this is our new normal i don't like our new normal i'm going to be miserable in this new normal if that is the part of your thoughts now we go to the actions what have you been doing during this pandemic if you just stay at home and not do anything cocoon in your own room not talking to people refusing to manage with this new normal and you would want to change the back wheels of the car the feelings and the physiology one of the best ways to change our back wheels is to focus on the front wheels of the car instead of questioning our feelings and physiology work on the thoughts what if instead of thinking that i'm going to be miserable in this new normal i don't have the guts to go through with this new normal what about challenging our irrational thoughts what about if we say that yes this is a new normal but i think i'll be able to work on it it had been tough for the past months but here i'm still alive i'm still able to eat so probably it's going to be okay 
this is a new normal. I will try all my best to adapt to this new normal. And then focus on your actions. So instead of just sitting down, doing nothing, hey, one of the things that I always tell you when you're, when you're feeling sad, when you're feeling depressed, get up. Get up and do something. Small wins, small victories during the pandemic. It can be as easy as making up your bed, preparing breakfast, going through with the day. To win this war against the invisible enemy, the COVID-19, is not just a matter of taking care of our bodies, but also taking care of our mental health. It's like asking the question which comes first, the physical health or the mental health? It's like asking the question which comes first, the chicken or the egg? We need to take care of our bodies and we also need to take care of our mental health. Martin Sinigman introduced to us the concept of perma V for psychological well-being. P stands for positive emotions. So in every day, we need to engage in activities that generate in us positive emotions. It can be having a cup of coffee, it can be a cup of tea, watching your favorite movie, reading a book. If it generates in you positive emotions, then fine. So we need to do more of these activities that generate in us positive emotions. E, E stands for engagement. What have you been doing lately? What keeps you busy? It can be a hobby, it can be a new business. You have to do something. It can be taking care of plants, or it can be a hobby of baking, it can be learning something. R stands for relationships. So our relationships are also predictors of our quality of life. So we need to focus on our most significant relationships and work on it for it to become better. M stands for meaning. What is your meaning in life? So for some, probably you'd say your children, family, you want to be the very best for your family so what have you been doing and then a we focus on the achievement little wins so it has been a couple of months already that we have been experiencing this pandemic and if you're listening to if you're viewing this program now of miss pilar then probably you have internet you have electricity so these are great wins already if you're able to provide for your family you've been able to fed your children been able to pay for your electricity you have water so these are the achievements that you have so congratulations that you're able to go through with all of this and letter V stands for vitality you need to get up you need to exercise sleep well and eat nutritious foods change is inevitable this is already our new normal it can be tough can be challenging but of course we need to remind ourselves that as long as there's a breath of life there is still hope during this pandemic to make the most out of it we need to be generous and kind to people but of course the very important thing is to be kind and generous to ourselves this is truly a big help Dr. I hope that our viewers have learned from this valuable information that you have and recommendations that you have. If they need a, a review of all of these, then all they have to do is click to the replay button and voila. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ra, for your time. Thank you so much. Yes, Miss Pilar. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share to your audience. It is best though for all of us to learn to adapt, lighten up, and survive the crisis the best way we can do it, or the best way we can think about it. Thank you for watching. See you next week, next Sunday, for Livelihood and Limits Survival Strategies.